Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you an amazing library, actually by one of my followers, by Rafael Costa. Thanks so much for submitting that, since it's really great. What is this library? Well, it makes navigation on Compose, Shepard Compose, a lot easier. So basically, all the problems we developers had with navigation in Jetpack Compose are now resolved thanks to this library. And if you now think uh, navigation Compose actually was fine, then I have to prove you wrong with this video. You will see how much was actually wrong with navigation um, in, component, uh, in Jetpack Compose. So let's actually jump into Android Studio here, or first my phone. We will just build a very simple three screen app where we just pass some arguments. We have uh, yeah, post screen, before that was profile screen and a login screen, just some basic hard-coded values. So we'll just take this normal setup here of navigation and Jetpack Compose, and we will migrate it to use Raphael's library. So just a, as a quick overview what we have here, by the way, you can get this initial project from my GitHub, so you can also do this on the fly here, just with me together, basically. We have our nav host, which is responsible for swapping out the composables, like our different screens when we navigate. We need to assign nav controller, which will perform the navigation, we will uh, provide a start destination, just a route where we start. So in this uh, normal Compose navigation library, we, we just use these routes in forms of strings to yeah, just uniquely identify a specific screen with a set of arguments maybe. And if we have these arguments, we need to specify all these <laughs> in this list of nav arguments where we specify the name, the type, like a string, string, long. Then we need to retrieve these here from the nav backstack entry to pass these down to our actual screen. Then here again, just uh, yeah, to show you all as well how it works with default values, which is here just a boolean, which is set to false initially. Mm. And then for every screen, we just have a single composable, which gets its nav controller to perform the navigation when we click a button. Here we pass all these hard-coded values as navigation arguments to this route. So we go to profile screen, pass Philip as name, user ID as user ID, and this as a timestamp. And then this profile screen composable will receive these values here, construct a user object, so just a wrapper class around this, and then show this on our screen here. I have to mention this user class is a parcelable, and in navigation components, so for XML, we were able to pass these parcelables as arguments. However, in Compose, that's not possible. Uh, Compose only supports these very simple values like strings, integers, and so on. But yeah, passing down parcel levels would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Luckily, we now have Raphael's library, which supports that. Which it's, in it's incredibly awesome. But for the other, like the normal Compose way of navigating, we have to pass these values individually and then uh, create our own user object of that, which is super bad. Because as soon as you extend your user object with more fields, you need to change the fields of all your classes that receive such a user object. It's terrible. So now we will actually migrate this to use the Compose Nav Destinations library by Raphael step by step. First of all, we want to make sure that you use this uh, Compose version, which you will use when you get this from uh, GitHub, which I can really just recommend. Otherwise, you'll probably run into some version issues. I'm using Kotlin 1.6.10. And then let's jump into our build.gradle app file because here we need to do some changes. So the way the library from Raphael works is it uses the KSP plugin, which is just some kind of code generation plugin. I don't know how it works behind the scenes. I'm sure he knows. And uh, yeah, he, by the way, also has like a Medium article, which I will link down below, which goes a little bit deeper into that. So I will actually just copy over these values from my other project, which you can, again, just get from my GitHub. So this is the uh, KSP plugin, which we need. Then we need to add some kind of Kotlin block right here. So this just makes sure that the plugin here um, looks at the right paths when it comes to the generated classes. So we generate some classes that make the navigation easier for us. And we need to add two dependencies down here in our built uh, Gradle app file, which I will also quickly uh, get here and paste. 
So on the one hand, like an implementation, and the other one is related to that plugin. Just these two. I'll click sync now, and then we should be ready to jump into main activity and actually migrate this step by step. It's, it really won't take a lot of time here because the library is really good. First of all, what happens with our nav host and our nav controller? Let me tell you what, we will just take this, delete it. It's gone. We don't need it anymore. We don't need to specify any, any type of uh, nav types, any type of routes. All that is not necessary anymore. But how do we tell the library what we have as screens? Well, we do that using annotations. So for all of our screens here, we want to annotate these with add destination. And since the login screen is our start destination, we want to set start equal to true. Just like that. Then we can scroll down, do the same for our other screens. Here we just need destination and not any arguments for that. And finally, for the post screen, we do the same. Also annotate this with destination. And then the uh, Gradle plugin will actually take these annotated composables and take a look which arguments they need. And based on that, like this is a better example, based on that, it will generate some classes that allow us to pass type safe nav arguments. That's really cool. So now we don't need to do this anymore. Instead, we can simply pass a user class. Since that is, oops, um, since that is a parcelable, that will work. We also don't need to construct this user object here anymore. Since we can just get this as an argument. Here, we don't need to change anything since a boolean is just a boolean. Um, but in all of our screens now, we still use a nav controller. And the library uh, composed nav destinations works differently. It doesn't use a nav controller. Um, it will probably be behind the scenes, but uh, what we need to use is a so called navigator, which is a destinations navigator. So that is now used to navigate from one screen to another. And then we can go here, delete this nav controller navigate, and we say navigator, navigate. And you can see that now takes a direction that's very similar to a navigation component from XML that also generated some kind of direction classes. So what we can now do is we actually can't do that yet because the classes has not been generated. So let me quickly delete that for now and just make sure we pass these navigators everywhere. So here and in the profile screen and in the post screen, we don't need it. Just making sure we remove this. And now we're actually ready to generate the necessary classes by simply rebuilding our project. So go to build, rebuild project, waiting a moment. And when that is done, we should actually be able to see the classes. Now the rebuild is finished. So if we now take a look here in our button, then we can now use our navigator, that navigate, and the direction will be, well, we want to go to our profile screen. That means, we will go to profile screen destination. That is a class that has been generated here by the plugin. We can just construct an instance of that the normal way. And that will now take the user. So the argument we actually have. So we can now just construct a sample user here. Just with any values you like. And user ID actually just ID is user ID. And finally, you can see now we can also pass a created timestamp in form of a local date time because local date time is also parcelable. Let's just pass the current time. So that's awesome. We, we now have generated classes that allow us to, uh, to pass type safe values and parcelables in profile screen. When we navigate to our post screen, we want to do navigator, navigate, post screen destination. And here we pass. Well, we don't need to pass anything. Just wanted to show you that we uh, that it also supports default values. So if we leave it empty, it will simply pass false, but we can pass true if you want. So far, so good. Now, the only thing that's uh, missing is something, of course, here in our main activity root composable. And that is now not a na normal nav host anymore, instead a destinations nav host. And that takes a nav graph, where we can pass nav graphs 
that's also a class that has been generated. That root. So you, you see how much less code that is. We just re completely removed this whole nav host where we needed to manually specify all these different types we have, where we needed to uh, like manually specify these different route parameters, route names. That's a pain. And you see how much easier it actually can be. And I wish the Google team would have actually done something like that right away. Because for XML, it is very similar. And I don't understand it that much why they, why they want to make it feel like web so badly. Now, Android is not web. We don't have normal URLs here. However, now we luckily have Raphael's library, which is really amazing, as you can see. But let's actually try this out. And hopefully this will work. Taking a look here. Oops, that's Spotify. <laughs> um, taking a look here on my device. Going to my profile screen. And you can see the, the argument the user is passed down. And it works just fine. Going to post screen, we get the value false. And yeah, I guess that's an, a really amazing library. I really like it. I will use it in my future projects because it really simplifies so much. And I really hope, Raphael, that you will keep developing this library and um, implementing more cool features. I will link all the resources down below. So the initial GitHub project, then the final GitHub source code, then Raphael's Medium article, and a link to the library where you can also find a little readme. Yeah, big shout out to you, Raphael. Thanks for submitting that. And thanks for everybody for watching. Wish you an amazing rest of the day and uh, see you back in the next video. Bye bye.